This is Spencer with The MacGuffin, and today I'm joined by Joe Swanberg. Hello. Writer, director of Drinking Buddies. Uh, it's very nice that you came up to SIF. I actually <laughs> saw the film back at uh, South by Southwest. Oh, I was cool. very glad to see you come up here. Yeah, my pleasure. Um, this is sort of an interesting turning point for you from my perspective in the sense that, you know, you've been an incredibly prolific director over like the last, you know, five years, like you and Alex Gibney are like the two people who seem to just churn stuff out. But this feels like a very much more sort of polished, I hesitate to say Hollywood eyes, but it's sort of much more larger in scale. Yeah. Was that something that you had sort of thought about doing for a while? Was this a special project that's a sort of uh, something separate from the rest of your career and you might go back to smaller stuff after this? Is this, um, what is this in your career? Yeah, I, and you know, Hollywood Eyes is not a, an insult for this no, movie. Just, I, I, I want, yeah, scale, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Well, you know, I mean, truthfully, the way that I always thought about Drinking Buddies was... Um, as a studio movie, but as like a 70s studio movie when they were back when studios sure. were making this kind of stuff. Um, and I wanted it to be a Hollywood movie. You know, I want, I want it to be accessible. I want, uh, I want it to play a lot of theaters. I want a lot of people to see it. Um, and, uh, and so the challenge was to try and make something that, that could be available to people in that way and still be interesting and adult and complicated and challenging. And I, def I definitely think you're right. I think you succeed very much in that way. And one of the things that I sort of think is interesting in the film is that it's, it's a very accessible movie, but it's not something that's necessarily story heavy. It's yeah. more of just yeah, like yeah. sort of, an, I don't know, experiential sort right, of achievement. Right, 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 right. Really no, I, I agree with that, yeah. It's, um, it's like probably a defect in my character that I'm still working on. Like, I'm so allergic to story that I almost don't know how to handle it. Like, uh, I it doesn't come naturally to me. I'm so interested in characters um, that I just easily get lost and wrapped up in that. I'm actually I, I'm I'm uh, as a filmmaker, I'm attempting to sort of challenge myself and open myself up to. Uh, story learning to get better at that I think it can be really useful and helpful actually as, I, as a skeleton for the audience to sort of uh, hold on to and maybe I could still provide the uh, experiential character I, I definitely based. feel like this is definitely sort of intermediary step between the yeah two. I mean it's definitely just it's more story heavy than anything I've made very much so and yeah. it's also much much I'm not to say your other stuff's inaccessible yeah, or something yeah. like this but this is something that's much more sort of a mainstream yeah kind of no I, I I agree yeah I agree agree that was that was a that was a goal yeah I think I'll I think I'll move back and forth you know I think I mean hopefully I'll do things bigger than drinking buddies and smaller than drinking buddies over the next couple years which I think is very cool but that's sort of one of the things I want to ask you about in terms of your career I mean you know I don't want to judge it from the outside, but there's some sort of characteristic, and I mean, obviously Alex Gibney, you know, as I mentioned before, is proof that it doesn't necessarily a bad thing, but you are a guy who's done a lot of yeah. quantity of film. Is there any sort of concern as a filmmaker about, I don't know, tapping yourself out, getting to a point where it's more quantity than quality, something like that? And I, I don't know, how do you sort of know yeah, yeah. when you are putting something out there that you think is a product we're checking out versus just, you know, I, I've got three months, I'm going to make yeah, a movie, something yeah. like that. Um, I don't, I actually don't differentiate uh, between those things because uh, films that I've made very quickly have, have hit with audiences sure. and done well. Films that I've really labored <laughs> over haven't. Sure, totally. Um, so, so the the lessons I took away from that are that it's project by project, and and sometimes uh, something that you do very small and very quick registers with people, and you know, I mean, we get examples every single weekend of, oh. of huge blockbuster movies that Purge, a lot of instance, thought. The Purge just came out, and that was like I don't know what a hundred, five hundred yeah, yeah. million dollar budget yeah, or yeah. something like that, and I made thirty million dollars. Yeah, it's it. it's uh, it, you know, you you can't tell there's no uh, surefire uh, recipe to this other than uh, spending a ton of money promoting right. a movie which seems to work most of the time but um, but yeah you know I uh, with each project it's just what I'm what I feel I'm most excited about that moment what I think uh, I can uh, successfully get away with in a sense you know like what a uh, uh, 
combination of my own personal excitement, uh, actors' availability, and you know all the other uh, hundred thousand elements that have to fall into place to actually make a movie. Well, that is one of the interesting, most interesting elements to this film is that you had was a Ben Richardson yeah. as the DP on this. Who was you know I don't know I, I know chronologically if this was done before or after Beast of the Southern Wild. Uh, but after this was I, his next movie. Wow, like what a what a time to get him. I mean, yeah. the, the film looks understandably beautiful. Yeah. Is that something that you paid more attention to? Was it sort of a serendipitous sort of like, oh, he's available and he's willing to do it. Let's use him. Or um, that, I mean, do you, do you care as much about how beautiful it looks versus what the character story is? Certainly, certainly. Uh, the, I mean, the photography always has to be there to help tell the story and, and has to be right for the movie. Um, I mean, Ben and I worked uh, incredibly well together. He's a person who, uh, y you know, you always hope for a sort of unspoken, uh, mind meldy experience with a with any collaborator that you're working with. Where y you know, at the end of a take, you don't even have to talk about it. You kind of look at each other and know whether you got it or whether you should do another one. And um, so yeah, you know, I, I, Ben and I, I actually hadn't seen Beasts of the Southern Wild wow. when uh, when I hired Ben. It was more just based on uh, a nice hour-long conversation that we had where I realized that we thought about movies in the same way. And uh, he's utilitarian in a really uh, excellent way, which I think makes him a, a great DP and collaborator, especially for the way that I like to work, because... Um, He's not precious in the best way possible. He's not He's not there trying to uh, put together pretty shots for his demo reel. He's a storyteller the same way I am, and his um, main concerns are performance and storytelling. So, uh, and also he and I are both people that really appreciate the happy accident. You know, we're not, uh, we're not looking for perfection. We're actually looking for aliveness. Um, a spontaneity in a sense that uh, the things happening before the camera are 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 real and and present, you know. And um, so it was a really wonderful experience. It's the closest I've worked with a DP. You know, I really um, Adam Wingard has shot a couple of my movies, right, and right, yeah. and uh, I really love his photography. And then I worked with uh, Matthias Grunsky and Ben Kasolki on nights and weekends. Yeah, and Ben Kasolki, every Seattle, yeah, absolutely. Light. But you know, every time I've worked with DPs, I've had a really uh, wonderful experience. But but Ben is somebody who, uh, as long as I can afford him, and as long as he's interested in doing the movies, I'll want to keep working with well, him. Well, that's sort of one of the interesting questions I had. As somebody who's like you know very much got an independent spirit, is it challenging at all? to sort of keep people that you regularly work with. For instance, you know, Ben Richardson is a very talented guy, and I've, I've speculated that he's just gonna get swallowed yeah. up by Hollywood. It's, yeah, I mean, yeah, you yeah. think about, you know, somebody like, whether it be like Christopher Nolan or something, yeah. it's gonna be like, that guy's awesome, I yeah. want him on every film I do for yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's sort of like, I mean, it's cool that you have a relationship, and maybe yeah, he'll yeah. collaborate with you again, but, you know, you mentioned like Adam Wingard, yeah. people like that. like. Is it is it challenging to keep finding like a new crop of indie people to work with? Because I mean, you know, like Greta Gerwig, sure, you worked with, sure. and she's great, but she's one of those people that's sort of gotten sucked up into yeah, the yeah. next level. Yeah, no, it's not challenging. It's really fun. I mean, I, uh, I I meet people all the time that are that are really talented young people, or, or ha you know, sort of uh, just getting started making movies and. Uh, no, it's a great pleasure to, to collaborate with people early in their career, you know? I mean, there's something really, there's something about me as a filmmaker where I've tried to remain unformed, you know? I, I don't want to, I don't want to, you know, too heavily to stamp myself as one thing or the other and, and get locked into a, a way of filmmaking or a uh, sort of heavily a tourist kind of, you know, I mean, there's there's an element of, of me that I can never get rid of. I will always be myself, but... Uh, which is a good thing. I mean, Which is, yeah, I mean, it's just... It's your oh, best attribute. It's not it's neither good or bad as far as I'm concerned. I can't help it. I, 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 I could try my hardest not to be myself, and I think my movies would still look like I made them. But. I, I think, it's, I think it's, it's the best attribute. Like, you know, I think so many people are caught up in trying to replicate. Like, oh, I want to be the next Christopher Nolan. Sure, oh, I want to sure. be the next J.J. Abrams, something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. That it takes away something of that unique sensibility. Yeah. I think, you know, it's good to sort of embrace that quality. Yeah, yeah. 
maybe. Yeah, I really early in my career resisted uh, homage, you know, or, or or an attempt to emulate filmmakers whose work I liked. And uh, you know, hopefully, I've been doing it for like nine years now. Hopefully, I'm at a point where the where the work is pretty much my own. You know, where I'm I, I'm uh, certainly done enough of it that I that I'm comfortable. Uh, on a set now in, in a way that I didn't used to be. You're, I mean, you also have an interesting sort of angle on that you do a lot of acting as well. Has that influenced how you direct it all? Defi- I mean, definitely. Because you yeah. are one of, like, you th- we talk about how prolific you are as a director. It seems like every year you're in any number of things that you're acting. Yeah, so. I really love acting. I, I, I really love acting as a director. You know, I, I've learned more about directing from being an actor really? than, than wow. I have from directing. Um, yeah, it's, it's incredibly vulnerable. I mean, it's a hard, it's a hard, embarrassing thing to do. You know, you sort of, um, you're expected to perform in front of people, you know? I mean, it's really, it's a weird <laughs> profession and there's, you know, it's filled with insecurity and rejection and, um, it's nice to be constantly reminded of that when I'm acting in other people's movies. And also, you know, there's, uh... Like, I'm a pretty confident uh, person normally. I, I can go through a day n- not full of insecurities and neuroses. You know, I, I, I am pretty functional. And, sure. Um, there's something about uh, when I act, all of a sudden, uh, I need all of this approval. And, and you know, the, the director that I'm working for, who's often a friend of mine, who I'm, like, the night before, like, hanging out with and getting a beer right, with, yeah. and we're, like, peers... And then suddenly the next day on set when I'm an actor, like this friend of mine, I'm like really desperately seeking their approval. And um, it's it's nice to remember how uh, how crazy making it is to act. And then as a director, I think I'm I, I'm a lot more sympathetic um, and open to that to that kind of insecurity from from those people who who in their normal lives are incredibly successful confident right, yeah, people yeah. you know that's funny one of the sort of interesting things about drinking buddies i also thought was that you know you're a very sort of progressive filmmaker and that you're one of the people who's embraced like the internet and whatnot yeah very much so this in some ways feels like it's not in opposition to that, but it's sort of going in a much more sort of traditional yeah. route. Is that something that, I don't know, you are trying to embrace as well? Or is this is this just an experiment? I mean, you, you very much embrace the internet in terms of releasing yeah, things. Yeah, sure, sure. Uh, I don't know if it's an experiment. It's certainly a challenge that I pose to myself to see if I could make something in a more traditional way with a with a full size crew and a and a uh, you know production in a in a way that I haven't had a production since film school really. And um, but uh, no, I don't know. I'm just not. You know, I I'm not sure what kind of filmmaker I want to be yet. You know, and so I think that I'm I'm trying some things right now to make sure that uh, my options remain open to me. I mean, Steven Soderbergh's a big hero of mine. You know, he's a guy that uh, has talked a lot about this. And, you know, when he made Out of Sight, which was like a big departure from uh, Schizopolis and Grey's Anatomy and the stuff he was doing at the time, uh, he talked about it as a conscious effort to claw his way out of the indie ghetto, you know, the art house ghetto. Sure. I'm drinking buddies. I don't think will, you know, it's not a George Clooney like heist movie, but um, it's I mean, it's a very likable engaging. Yeah, movie. it's it, it's certainly uh, you know there's probably a little defensiveness. I think I wanted to probably prove to some people that uh, I could do this thing if I wanted to, but um, you know there's also a real natural desire on my part uh, after having made a lot of movies and been doing this for a while to. Um, communicate with an audience in a different way. Like I, um, I used to really enjoy uh, challenging everything, challenging the definition of a movie, challenging an audience's uh, uh, feelings about things. You know, I, I was just a really aggressive as a as a filmmaker, and 
I don't. F I didn't feel like that going into Drinking Buddies. I wanted to connect with people. I made the movie in an effort to communicate, not to not to challenge. You know. I mean, the, one of the things that's sort of nice about it, though, is it's kind of like an introductory drug, though, in some ways. I feel like you know this is definitely a much more sort of mainstream friendly project, and that then might lead people back to your other stuff. I mean, sure. I, think, I think that's sort of one of the biggest sort of misnomers in my perspective is, you know, the difference between art house film and indie film. And I yeah. think a lot of mainstream audiences don't differentiate the two of them. It's yeah, yeah. Like it's, if it's indie, it's inaccessible. Right. And I think indie can be any type of film, but you just sort of have to lead them to try it and experience it. And that's sort yeah. of like, this is a nice sort of in-between step. Yeah, you know, it's... Uh, it's it's I hope accessible you know I, I think that that word will come up a lot you know and, and it's it's tough to totally define but you know certainly my intentions were were honest you know I, I, I wanted uh, I had things that I wanted to say and I and I wanted as many people as possible to be able to engage with those things. You were very smart in casting, though. I mean, you got, was it Jake Johnson, Olivia Wilde, Anna Kendrick, and Ron Livingston? Yeah. We're all, like, immensely likable, yeah, yeah, engaging yeah. people. Sure. And, like, you talk about wanting to make it easy and accessible yeah, yeah. to people. Like, those people are probably, like, the perfect Yeah, people well, you know, I, I want to work with likable people. I mean, selfishly, I, I, I want to spend my days, my creative days around people who I like hanging out with. Um, I'm not a, I'm not a director that uh, gets off on antagonism and and you know I don't like You're not Lars Ventura, yeah I don't you're I, I don't uh, I, you know I'm not I'm not looking to uh, run the actors through any kind of uh, tricks or deceptions or anything like that um, I want a sort of open plane of communication and and you know I want to work with really smart people who who can have a conversation that isn't about movies and um, you know that's a big thing for me and, and with all four of those actors uh, was the case that they're all fascinating to talk to offset you know and, and especially with with improv and, and with asking them to bring a lot of themselves to the movie um, I needed people who had a whole deep well of life and experience to draw from, uh, not people that have just been movie creatures their whole life, you know? Totally. Um, so the film has been bought by Magnolia. Uh, what's the release strategy? July? It's going to come out on VOD July 25th, and then it's going to uh, open in New York on August 23rd and start playing around right. other theaters after that. And a uh, website for the movie? I don't know, actually. Go, the I'll Magnolia Magnolia oh, Pictures website is where to go. But. And in terms of you, is there anything else you want people to look forward to from you that you've got? Sure. Up? Well, I, I acted in a movie called You're Next, uh, oh, horror I've heard film. Amazing. Oh, that's one of those great tragedies I missed yeah, 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 yeah. Well, you'll get a chance to oh, see it in August. And uh, and then uh, I did a movie called All the Light in the Sky, uh, which actually started playing festivals before Drinking Buddies, and then I think it'll come out after Drinking Buddies. So um, keep an eye out for that sometime this fall. Hopefully it'll it'll come through here. And you have a Twitter, as I recall, for people I, to keep I do. up to. It's, it's, just... it's Joe underscore Swanberg. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Joe. Thank I you. wish you luck. Check out Drinking Buddies. It's a yes, lot of fun. Yes, please check and, uh, out Drinking Buddies. <laughs> check out more interviews at MacGuffin. That's MacGuff.in, and uh, we'll see you next time. Magneto can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. Even Zod can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. This type don't even try to buy the sun style. Mr. Spock can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. The Wrath of Khan can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. The board can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. Because I've got space game and it feels alright.